Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on the obesity crisis. Uh, so we're just going to start off by looking at the main objectives of our presentation. So first of all we're going to just have a little bit of a look at what we define as obesity uh, as well as the factors that contribute to it and the effects that it can have uh, and then afterwards we're going to have a look at some practice questions uh, and how we can approach them. So let's kick off with a definition. Uh, the WHO defines obesity as the abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that may impair health. So this is quite a vague definition, but it's also interesting because at what point does obesity become not abnormal accumulation of fat? Uh, with an increasing proportion of our population becoming overweight and obese, at what point does this become normal? So uh, perhaps a different measure is the BMI. And being overweight is classed as a BMI of over 25, whereas obesity is a BMI of over 30. And you can calculate your BMI by taking your weight and dividing it by the square of your height. And quite immediately, we can see that there's a lot of problems with this measure. Um, most notably, the fact that a lot of factors can contribute to your weight, not only how much fat you have. Um, so this includes the amount of muscle, uh, organs and so on. So someone like a bodybuilder might actually be classed as overweight or obese by this measure. On the other hand, you could argue that it's such a successful measure because it's so simple and therefore anyone can very easily calculate their BMI at home and get at least a vague readout of their health quite quickly. So what factors contribute to obesity? Uh, you may hear some people argue that obesity is due to people eating too much and exercising too little. But the reality is that for most people, uh, your body weight is so much more multifactorial than just about food and exercise. For example, factors such as your stress and your sleep can contribute to your overall metabolic health uh, and your degree of obesity. Uh, in addition, health and medication uh, can contribute to your body weight. So, for example, later we will discuss certain health conditions that can affect um, your body weight. Um, and very importantly, environment, uh, because obesity is increasingly being recognized as more of a socioeconomic issue. So, for example, vegetables and fruit can actually be very, very uh, expensive, and therefore it's simply not affordable for some people to be able to eat healthily, and this can drive obesity. And finally, we have genetics. So not only certain health conditions, but certain genes on their own uh, can very subtly influence your body weight. So here we have a case study that very clearly illustrates the point that obesity is not just about food and exercise. Um, this is called prader willi syndrome, uh, which is a genetic condition caused by the loss of certain genes on chromosome 15. Uh, and it affects the hypothalamus. Uh, and the hypothalamus is a part of the brain that's involved in producing hormones that contribute to various parts of uh, body function, uh, notably your appetite. Uh, so prader willi syndrome functions an insatiable appetite that in turn drives obesity. Uh, and while we have no direct cure for prader willi syndrome, we choose to treat its consequences. So for example, sleep apnea is common uh, in people with obesity uh, and we can treat this using ventilation. So perhaps you might not want to learn all the details of this case study, but it's definitely worth keeping in mind as sort of an example of the fact uh, that genetics uh, play a large part in obesity as well. So let's take a look at the consequences of obesity. And first of all, in terms of consequences to the individual, obesity increases the risk of various chronic conditions such as fatty liver disease, heart disease, cancer, and so on. Uh, but also it's associated with worse mental health outcomes and a poorer quality of life. Uh, and it's probably worth thinking why this might be. Is it perhaps a societal problem where we place a certain degree of stigma on being obese? Um, and quite worryingly, obesity seems to affect quality of care. There's been a lot of studies that show that doctors uh, show a degree of weight bias uh, and therefore can, this can influence how the patient experience is. So it's quite important to recognise that 
doctors and the public both play a role in the way that obesity affects individuals. And finally, Obesity can affect the ability of individuals to perform exercise and participate in certain activities, which in turn can actually reinforce the obesity in the first place. In terms of consequences to the NHS, um, obesity related conditions are costing the NHS over £6 billion a year. Uh, and over the last five years, there's been a 20% increase in hospital admissions directly linked to obesity. Uh, but we have to uh, recognize that costs are not only directly related to treating the consequences of obesity but also in prevention campaigns which are also very costly. So we've ticked off all our background knowledge let's go and take a look at how we can answer some interview questions. So here are some top tips for approaching any sort of MMI or interview questions on obesity that you may have. Um, and first of all, it's worth remembering that obesity is super multifactorial uh, and it's worth chucking in a condition such as Prada Willy to demonstrate that you understand that obesity also has genetic and environmental components to it. Uh, so the worst thing you could probably do is just to say they need to eat less and that's it. Um, secondly, remember that obesity has mental consequences as well as physical ones, including the way that other people perceive you. Uh, including doctors and the rest of the public. Thirdly, obesity is different from other conditions that you may see because it is occasionally reversible. So rather than some conditions where it's a case of diagnosis and cure, a lot of people have to fight an individual battle to overcome their obesity. So the way that we consider it uh, as medical professionals is different. Finally, be very careful with the language that you use. Uh, this topic is surrounded with stigma and therefore some people may be offended by certain words that you use. So all that we have left to do now is have a go at some practice questions. Uh, so here is a mock interview question that you may receive. Should we focus on preventing obesity or treating its consequences? And feel free to pause the video here and have a think about how you might answer this question. So, as usual, it's important to provide a degree of a balanced argument. Uh, so here are some points for both prevention and treatment of obesity. In terms of prevention, prevention is typically much cheaper for the NHS in treatment, at least in theory. So if you spend a small amount educating a single person about obesity, it will probably be cheaper than their eventual bypass surgery. Uh, secondly, prevention avoids many of the long-term consequences of obesity. So if someone develops obesity uh, and develops mental health problems as a consequence, um, just because you treat the underlying obesity, it doesn't necessarily mean that their mental health issues will also resolve. Uh, thirdly, treatment of obesity is not usually successful, and if it is, then people typically regain a large amount of their weight, if not more than originally. Now, in terms of treatment, treatment is perhaps superior because prevention is rarely effective. Uh, some people might argue that it's actually quite a idealistic idea um, that you can educate someone and therefore they won't develop obesity. And also it's worth thinking back to what we were talking about earlier and that not all types of obesity ca can even be prevented. So you couldn't educate someone out of prada willi syndrome, for example. Secondly, Educational and social campaigns to prevent obesity are kind of difficult to justify when the money could go to a different cause. So you probably wouldn't ever have to do this, but imagine telling someone who needs a heart transplant that they can't have it because the money is going towards an educational campaign instead. It, some might argue that that's not fair. Thirdly, treatment is highly effective in certain cases. So um, in leptin deficiency, you can uh, use leptin replacement uh, and leptin is a hormone which is involved in controlling your appetite. So here are the aspiring medics top tips uh, on the topic of the obesity crisis. First of all, learn the definitions of obesity and the main contributing factors so that you're ready to have a discussion about any sort of topic that comes up. Secondly, feel free to read around the topic uh, and there should be more related resources on our website. Thirdly, 
remember to answer questions with care as for a lot of people this can be a sensitive topic.